Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Hi, good evening, Dr. Evelyn Songko at sa mga viewers ng ating Bridges. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Another... And hello, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to our uh, viewers on Bridges here on CBRC.tv. Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Hi, good evening, Dr. Evelyn Songko at sa mga viewers ng ating Bridges. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Again. Another... And hello, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to our uh, viewers on Bridges here on CBRC.tv. Hello, welcome to Bridges. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Today's show or tonight's show is again brought to us by the Graduate School Alumni Association. And of course, we would like to thank uh, Dr. Fernando Pedrosa for this. He is the president of the Graduate School Alumni Association of the University of Santo Tomas. And we'd like to thank also Mrs. Nilda Pedrosa Hernit. He is a realtor and former Palo Leite counselor who helped br bring the show together tonight. Uh, of course, I'm Evelyn Sonko, and with me is Claude Dispabiladera. Claude, yan ang aking laging co-host. Claude, uh -huh. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. You know, How was your weekend? Ma'am, it's okay. Uh, weekend is going well. Uh, I went out yesterday with uh, some friends, and not today I rested so that I'd, I'd be prepared for for this show. And how about your week, ma'am? How did it go, po? Oh my God, syempre, as usual, no? Busy. At saka, basa, ang daming binabasa, ang daming sinusulat. The usual. Uh, it's really very busy. Pero, you know, I was really very glad, ha? Inspired ako dun sa ano natin last Sunday, yung ating uh, vertical garden. Wow, it was fantastic, di ba? Napakaganda. Lalong-lalo na yung mga vertical gardens na ginagawa ng mga tao sama-sama. No? Now, you really will notice the vertical gardens around you pag naglalakad ka sa karsada. Di ba, Claude? Yes, I'm actually, ma'am, after that episode, uh, I think a day or two after that, I went to the part of our house, the facade, na pwedeng paglagay ng vertical garden. So, yun nga. And that's why, ma'am, that's why I'll draw attention to the fact that I'm wearing green tonight. <laughs> Binili ko ka ako. Planning to wear green? <laughs> yes. And ma'am, nakabili na rin ako tatlong green shirts for the next two episodes. I promise you. <laughs> Yesterday, that's, that's nice, why. That's nice. O, ipakilala mo na ang ating show, uh, ang ating guest, uh, tonight show, kaya napakaganda. Yun ang start natin. Ang ganda. We yes, have been talking about the environment. And I hope we will be able to inspire people, no? To really, to really give back to Mother Earth, no? Kaya ngayon, ang ating topic ay, ano nga, solid waste and climate change. O, di ba? Yeah. Introduce mo na yung ating speaker. Yes, Okay. Okay. Our guest for tonight is Dr. Arlen Angelada Ancheta. Um, Dr. Ancheta has a PhD in environmental science, and she is affiliated with the Faculty of Arts and Letters of the University of Santo Tomas. She is a professorial lecturer at the USD Graduate School, and she was the director of the Research Center on Culture uh, from 2012 to 2015, and uh, of the education and issues from USD, and she's also the current vice president of Mother Earth Foundation, MEF, an NGO advocating zero waste management. Dr. Ancheta is very active in environmental organizations as president 
Uh, she was president from 27 to 2019, and she uh, she's also affiliated with the Philippine Society for the Study of Nature. And she was vice president from 2015 to 2017 of the Philippine Network for Environmental Educators, PNEE. Likewise, she is an associate member of national of the National Research Council of the Philippines and her area of specialization in MS Environmental Sciences, UPLB, is community-based resource management, while PhD Environmental Science minor in sociology with an area of specialization in social theory and the environment. So to all our viewers, let us welcome to Bridges, Dr. Arlen. Hi, ma'am. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Um, makakalikasang gabi, araw, hapon sa ating lahat. <laughs> wow. Yes, Welcome to the show, Dr. Oh, Arlen. Oh, Arlen. Yan talaga ang Mother Earth ng uh, UST, no? Si Dr. Arlen Ancheta. Welcome. Oh, We're very happy that you are able to join us tonight. Oh, you oh, know, this topic is very close to your heart, no? Uh, I'm very sure that... Uh, Everyone is interested to know more about climate change. Would you like to tell our viewers about climate? Alam ko naririnig na nila to, ah, but I think no. Our show. Let's again tell about or or explain about uh, climate change and what causes it. Um, bago po tayo pumunta sa topic na climate change, siguro umpisahan po natin muna kung ano yung weather and climate. Kasi ito yung mga unang oh, natin. Okay. So, uh, weather refers to the daily atmospheric condition. Well, climate is the average uh, weather over time and space. Now, weather can be changed from time to time. Kaya nga po, pagka nagbabalita, sinasabi, ano ang ulat ng panahon sa araw na to? No? However, um, climate is an example of a slow onset change. Natural phenomenon yung uh, changing climate, pero matagal itong nangyayari. Hindi kagaya ng weather na daily uh, nagpapalit. No? So uh, pagka sinabi natin yung climate, ito yung, yung nagtatagulan, tag-araw. No? So um, may pattern, may weather pattern. All right. So, um, so climate change is a global phenomenon where climate patterns are disrupted. So, uh, paano nagkakaroon ng uh, disruption sa climate patterns? Um, basically, magsisimula tayo sa atmosphere, no? Basically, sa lower atmosphere, yung ating troposphere, it is composed of gaseous um, materials like nitrogen 78%, oxygen 21%, and small traces of greenhouse gases like argon, uh, methane, ozone, and carbon. Okay. However, we are dependent on carbon economy. So, uh, gumagamit tayo ng fossil fuel like uh, coal, gas, petroleum, um, yung uh, mga fossil fuel na to, to facilitate electricity transportation. And even our packaging materials made of plastic is also made from fossil fuel. So, uh, dahil sa tayo ay carbon dependent, no, the burning of fossil fuel releases carbon dioxide um, in the uh, um, atmosphere, thereby increasing the uh, presence of small traces of greenhouse gases. And these are heat-trapping gases. No? And so, uh, parang they, they cover the Earth's surface like a blanket, Mm -hmm. And they absorb heat energy entering the Earth's surface. Na instead na mag-bounce back itong heat uh, outside, uh, they, they, they trap the heat energy inside, increasing global temperature. So tumataas ngayon yung global temperature natin because of these uh, heat trapping gases. At the uh, increasing global temperature would affect precipitation, ulan, pati yung wind pattern. So dito na nagkakaroon ng, ano, ng disruption. So may mga lugar na prolong um, uh, prolong dry season, prolong wet season, tapos uh, other manifestations sinasabi nila na the rising of the sea level, the melting of the glaciers, no? so ito yung mga manifestations na nararamdaman na natin ngayon because of uh, climate change. 
So, ang parang culprit dito, eh, yung masyado kasi tayong carbon dependent community. Yun po yun. Ah, isa lamang po ito, ha? Mm. <laughs> Marami pa mga... At yun ay galing din sa mga basura. Um, yun. Kung, kung titignan naman po natin, ito ay tungkol doon sa mga fossil fuel na ginagamit natin. Kung i-extend natin ng konti yung paliwanag natin, no? at ipapasok natin yung usaping basura, um, dito kasi sa basura, iba't ibang, usually yung mixed waste, iba't ibang klaseng uh, basura na yung nakatambak sa ating mga landfill, sa ating mga disposal facility. Now, itong mga ito, it emits, releases methane. So, yung methane is another greenhouse gas, more absorptive, 25% more absorptive than carbon dioxide. So, uh, may carbon dioxide ka na on one hand dahil na may mga nasusunog na plastic sa, sa ating uh, landfill or disposal facility. At the same time, may methane gas ka pa. So, parang double whammy. Nandun sila lahat. Tapos, yung, yung, yung methane is really uh, more potent. Masyado siyang mas ma-absorptive siya ng 25%. Although kanyang residence time sa, sa atmosphere, mga pang sampung taon lang compared sa plastic, but the thing is, mas ano siya, mas uh, absorptive. Mas marami siyang na-absorb na heat. Yun. Kaya yun po yung, uh, yun po yung relation ng ating basura sa landfill natin. Kaya hanggat maaari, huwag tayong It divert. We have to divert no? waste from the landfill. Of course, isa lang yun. We're just talking of landfill. Meron pa rin ibang mga dahilan kung bakit merong mga methane emissions sa atmosphere. You know, Dr. Arlen, I remember that uh, the idea of uh, uh, climate change was taught to us in elementary school. And even mm -hmm. as young as we were, uh, we were told that, you know, we human beings have a role to play in that but it's something that's not apart from us we are we are we have something to contribute to uh to how the environment works how so how how our our, our activities affect climate change and, and particularly when it comes to our solid waste so dr arlen mm -hmm. what is the situation po, of our solid waste here in uh, metro manila po? Um, Una-una, we have a law on solid waste management. That's RA 9003. However, it's not uh, strictly implemented on the ground. Uh, dapat yan merong segregation at source. Kunti lang naman yung nagsisegregate at source ng mga household. Dapat yan merong material recovery facility as an intervention. However, only few LGUs have material recovery facility. No? Tapos yan, uh, linear flow kasi ang waste management. Tapon, pagtapon mo, kung ano pinapon mo, yun din ang matitigat, makikita mo sa final disposal facility. So, hindi dapat uh, linear flow. Dapat circular. No? Circular flow. Hindi dapat siya makakaabot. Hindi lahat. Dapat makakaabot doon sa ano sa disposal facility. So, so according to literature, ang uh, gagawa nating basura per person per day is half kilo. So if you're going to uh, multiply half kilo by the total number of population, ganun katoneto-neladang basura ang nagagawa natin sa isang araw. And so malaki na kaagad ang kailangan natin sa ganung klasing um, uh, basura. No? Unang-una, it means cost to the local government kasi it's collection, PPP, bayad sa landfill, so on and so forth. So it means cost. At the end of the night, uh, health risk. So, health risk din. So, marami siyang mga risk. No? Now, um, so, tapos pa, ay sa pag-aaral ng MMDA, yung biodegradable would con mostly consist yung ating ating uh, waste material. So, karamihan doon, kitchen waste. So, since kitchen waste ito, at pagka napunta to lahat sa, sa landfill, ito ay would emit uh, methane, so that mari dapat ida divert mo siya pero hindi eh mixed waste tayo so dapat ang kitchen waste natin pakakain mo sa mga hayop o kaya naman i-compost mo pero hindi eh parang business as usual pa rin tayo so yun yung mga ano natin mga suliranin natin related to climate 
tututo solid waste. At meron pa, naglilik pa sila. Hindi naman siya 100% collected, 100% uh, dumped in the disposal facility. May naglilik sa water waste natin. Ipataw natin marine waters. Yeah. So, uh, yun yung mm-hmm. mga problema kaakibat no, ng ating uh, panapon. Mm-hmm. Ng ating mixed waste. No? Okay. Yun. Um, so, um, Kailangan dito, uh, isa pa, centralized collection. Ang, for example, sa Metro Manila. So, isang malaking truck. Tapos, hindi naman tayo nag-segregate. Tapos, uh, sila kolekta lang ng kolekta. So, parang hindi talaga napapasunod yung RA na ni Zero Zero. So, um, contributor din ang solid waste sa climate change. Methane which is more potent than carbon na magkagaling sa mga basura natin. And of course, the burning of plastic na kasama din sa basura natin. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yan yeah. lang. Isang, isang maliit lang na bahagi ng ano yan, ng mga causes ng climate change. Of course, marami pa. No? Ganon. Yeah, so okay. both, so, both. Go ahead. Ah... Uh, so, no, what, what I was going to say, Dr. Tora, na individuals and also uh, the government both have a uh, both have roles to play in uh, mitigating climate change, hindi po ba? Opo, uh, opo. Supposedly, or, dapat ano yan, uh, top-down approach yan. Uh, magsisimula sa national government, pababa ng pababayan sa local government. Tapos at the same time, yung nasa on the ground, dapat ano din, uh, sila din mismo, hindi lang din tayo aasa sa gobyerno, no? dapat tayo din mismo, aware tayo na meron tayong ganung batas at aware tayo na dapat natin gawin yun para rin sa kapakanan natin kalikasan. No? Oo nga. That's so true. Tama, Claude, no? Actually, sabi ni... Uh, Dr. Carl, sabi ni Dr. Carl, dapat na we should be educated so that we do not become beast of the earth, no? But actually, uh, we should be stewards of the earth. Yun ang magandang niyang sinabi ngayon. Talagang pinili talaga ni Dr. Carl that we should be educated in terms of that. What what can you say about that, Dr. Arlen? Marami din naman mga kwento, no? Na mga individual at saka mga grupo. May mga stories who are actually uh, people of people who are committed to healing Mother Earth, di ba? So, Can you um, tell us dito, some stories like that? Yung stories um, sila, sa, hindi sila beast yeah, of the oh, Earth. Of, uh, oh. The environment. Uh, dito gusto ko lang i-zero in yung aking kwento sa experience, sa karanasan ng uh, City of San Fernando sa Pampanga. No? Kasi gumawa kami ng uh, documentation ng kanilang uh, solid waste management. And I can say that uh, the city of San Fernando in Pampanga, it's really a zero waste city in Congress. Um, unang-una, meron silang ordinansang no plastic ordinance. Meron silang ordinansang no segregation, no collection. Tapos, uh, mahigpit na lahat ng barangay sa kanila, sa city of San Fernando, merong material recovery facility. All right. And so, um, so, from the city government, supported by uh, the city council, the city government, down to the barangay level, um, may, meron silang mga batas na ganito, enhancing RA9003. All right. And so, uh, instead na centralized collection, kagaya ng nangyayari sa atin na puro mga dump trucks yung namumulek na sa kanila, hindi. Try bike. Kasi para dun sa pinakamaliliit na mga kalye sa purok, mapapasok nila. Hindi nila kinokolekta yung mga mixed waste. Kailangan segregated waste. Tapos, uh, meron silang material recovery facility kung saan nila inilalagak lahat ng kanilang mga recyclables sino sort out, may kanya-kanyang cell, tapos ang maganda pa doon, may composting area. So yung mga biodegradable, yung mga nabubulo, eh, binabaon doon sa kanilang composting area. So in a way, may mga gardens sila in the, uh, in the barangay. So it's a community garden. Now, yung mga, yung kanilang mga recyclables, if pinagbibili nila 
sa ano sa mga junk shops so secondary uh, market yon so makikita mo na umiikot yung ano yung mga commodities hindi sila nakakarating hanggang doon sa ano sa uh, landfill and so um, makikita mo dito na magandang model yung city of San Fernando in terms of ecological solid waste management following RA 9003. At dahil malaki ang kanilang recycling um, activities, tapos segregation activities, only a portion is being um, dumped in the disposal facility sa landfill, tapos 80% pa ng kanilang um, population ay 85% pa ng kanilang population ay ano na sumusunod na doon sa total ban on plastic. So um, so parang pinaiisipin nila yung ano yung yung kanilang mga practices. So of course hindi naman ito yung kahapon mo ginawa ngayon naging successful, no? Ano din it took time for them to uh, to, to to achieve this kind of practices. Mahirap kasi because you're talking of behavior we're talking of awareness, and this is a whole city. So, parang hindi doon naman magiging madali yun kung walang support din ng mga, kung walang institutional arrangements doon sa, sa city na yun. And wow. uh, on top of uh, sige po ma'am. Yeah. Uh, on top of um, merong NGO, no? merong NGO na tumutulong din naman sa kanila, parang uh, support system. Oh, ang galing naman nun, Dr. Arlen. So beautiful. Congratulations to San Fernando, Pampanga. Imagine mo, 85% of the population is already doing that. Ang galing, ano? Sana maging model talaga yan for the other local government. At nakikita mo dyan yung uh, relationship at cooperation ng mga tao, gobyerno, NGO. Ang galing very good. Congratulations, San Fernando, Pampanga. Tatandaan natin yan. Magaling na model. Claude, you have a question? No, actually, Professor Sonko, tama rin yung sinabi na doktora na as human beings, it's natural for us to want quick results. Yun talaga yung gusto natin. Pero maganda yung sinabi na doktora na it took time. So sana yes. we change our mindset also na... Uh, it, it takes time for, for changes to happen. So we have to start individually and maganda na merong support ng LGU. Ganon. Sana, sana everywhere else in the country ganon. Kasi if it's possible in San Fernando, Pampanga, it can happen everywhere else too. Right, ma'am? So, true. So in connection with that, Dr. Arlen, what will happen if we do not change our ways of garbage disposal? Oh, well, this is as usual. Then we continue to uh, harm the environment. Uh, in fact, there is uh, literature uh, saying that the Philippines ranks as the third, uh, world's third biggest polluter huh? with 2.7 metric tons of plastic uh, disposed or generated each year. So, uh, although there is a high collection uh, rate in the Philippines, Pero kasi hindi din naman lahat um, na, na, na po process no? And so, um, ibig sabihin nito, um, baka sumobra na tayo sa carrying capacity ng ating environment. No? In, in fact, um, we have gone beyond the carrying capacity of Metro Manila na space is a scarce resource, maski saan may nakatira. At uh, I, I think we have gone beyond the absorptive capacity of uh, our environment also that we are, are experiencing air pollution, uh, deteriorating water quality, pati yung mga uh, water waste dumping. So ito yung, mga, ito yung mga manifestations na pagka pinagpatuloy pa natin yung ating ginagawa, eh, saan naman tayo pupulitin, pupulutin no, no So maduming hangin, maduming tubig, maduming kapaligiran, hindi no. naman natin doon. Mm. Mm -mm. Pero Dr. Arlen, meron tayong ano, no? Lagi nating nakikita yun. Uh, reuse, <coughs> reduce, reuse, reduce, and recycle. Yung recycle nga, sinasabi na nung iba, uh, upgrading. Upgrading, no? Uh, how can we really do that? Re reuse, reduce, recycling. Ang daming taon na nating pinag-uusapan yan, ano? 
What can you say about that? Oo nga eh, ma'am, oo po nga, oo nga po. Ang dami na po na, ang dami ng, ang tagal-tagal na na ano to eh, na kumbaga, uh, parati natin sinasabi, reduce, reuse, recycle. Pero parang hindi naman natin na gagawa. No? Siguro sa tingin ko, yung yung aware, aware na aware tayo kung anong mangyayari, pero hindi natin magawa. Hindi ko talaga rin maisip bakit hindi rin karamihan sa atin magawa na mag-reduce. Reduce na hindi mo naman kung hindi mo naman kailangan at kung nagamit mo na, eh, pwede mo namang ipamigay, no? Share it with mm. others. Mm. Mm. Reduce. Uh, pwede hanggang sa, hanggang sa dapat pang mama magamit, reuse lang tayo ng reuse. And then recycle is using the same material in different form. Kaya lang, siguro dahil because of our throwaway society, no? so parang tapon lang dito, hindi pa natin mm-hmm. sinisegregate. Hindi na tayo nagre-reduce, mm-hmm. hindi na tayo nagre-reduce, hindi na nagre-recycle, no segregation pa. So, hmm. napaka-bisip ko, diba? Sa, sa maliit pa lang na mga kabataan, sinasabi na yon Pero parang hindi napasok sa ating kalinangan, no? yung reuse, reduce, recycle. Yun na nga, eh. Yeah. So, ano pwedeng gawin? Ah, well, what are your plans, for example? Ano kaya yung tinitignan natin in the future? Uh, in connection with research about environment, mga advocacy, Uh, ano kaya ang um, ating uh, future plans in connection uh, with ikaw, lalo ka uh, na, and yung grupo so, ninyo in connection so with ating, environmental uh, research and advocacy? So sa ating mga teachers at saka mga researchers, uh, lalo na sa amin sa Sustainability Studies uh, Research Interest Group, ang aming uh, advocacy talaga is environmental management, environmental protection. And so karamihan ng aming mga paper presentations is really about the environment. No? And so um, pwede na ba natin ipakita yung ating ano, uh, mga yes. uh, yung ating PowerPoint to all right ito po uh, ito po yung ano ito po yung mga nagawa namin mga uh, presentation stories behind the waste scene ito po ay sure ayan uh, anthropo anthropocene era so, sa anthropocene era tayo po na ang uh, gumagawa na ng uh, masyado na pong dominant yung ating influences ito naman po yung climate change at ito po yung nangyayari sa ating anthropocene era So, um, ito po is another paper on the uh, city of San Fernando where we discuss the social and economic benefits of uh, zero waste practices in, in the city. At ito na lang po ang pag-iwasan sa pandemic of the pandemic. Dahil sa ating mga, um, ayun po, uh, implication ng public health risks at increasing volume of solid waste, lalo na yung ating mga face masks, no? So, uh, ito naman po, ito po sa kwentong panahon tungkol sa uh, zero waste. So kung tayo po ay may kwento, ang ating mga panahon ay meron ding mga kwento. So ito po yung, sa mga, ito po yung mga advocacy na namin. I-present po ang aming mga researchers. Like NGO, LGBT partnership. Mas nating po kasi ang relasyon ng environmental management kung merong mga collaboration. No? Okay, at ito yung vulnerability ng mga bata sa baha. At this is along the shoreline of the Manila Bay. At pinakita namin dito kung nasa yung mga bata rin, they would rather um, magpulot ng mga recyclables than go to school. Kasi napapakinabangan nila itong mga recyclables. So, uh, nagpapakinabangan sa mga uh, nalunod ko sila bilang ang fishing bag. Manila Bay ay puro na siya basura. So ito po yung maaming mga ano, aming mga advocasya presented in different uh, conferences. Uh, ako napakadami nating matututunan talaga kay Dr. Arlen. Unfortunately, we really have do not much do not have much time. So Dr. Arlen, siguro yung last message mo sa ating mga viewers. What will you encourage them to do, Dr. Arlen? Um January is the month of uh, zero waste, no? And it's an advocacy month that promotes uh, the designing and managing of uh, products and processes to avoid and uh, eliminate the volume and toxicity of waste and other materials. 
So, uh, simple lang po rin talaga yung gusto kong sabihin ngayong gabi. Babalikan po natin yung reduce kung hindi natin kailangan. Gamitin natin ulit, reuse, recycle. Tapos, meron pa yung repair. no Or refuse. Kung hindi mo talaga refuse, no? Huwag na talagang gugrin. Lalo pa ngayon, nasa plastic generation tayo. So, dapat... Uh, bring our own bags pagka namimili, lalagyan ng bibihin, and let us be responsible stewards of the world. Hmm. Yeah. Ang ating mga kuding mga salita. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Arlen. You know, many people are watching us and uh, we would like to share with everybody the messages that we received from some of our viewers. So, um, like uh, from Fernand, Mr. Fernando Pedrosa, proper waste disposal and management of Pampanga must be emulated or enforced by all the Philippine LGUs. Mm -hmm. And ma'am, ma'am Franco? And of course, from Dr. Mir, ang sabi niya, please give us ways of disposing plastics so that they will no longer reach the dumping facilities. Oo nga, para hindi makarating doon, ano? Oh, avoid Fernandez. plastic. <laughs> avoid plastic. Nanette yes. Fernandez, is it really possible to achieve zero waste? Please tell us how. Mm. Um, ano pa yan? We are still in progress. Oh, yeah, yeah. We are still in progress, no? Pero sa mga ibang lugar sa abroad, naging filosofiya na po nila yung solid waste management na zero waste. And let's remember also, no? Sabi ni Dr. Carl Balita, let's be stewards of Mother Earth. Talagang mm -hmm. let us heal Mother Earth. Ito, sabi niya, please educate you uh, as humans uh, who have become beasts of this universe instead of becoming stewards. So mm -hmm. it has been a very insightful evening. Dr. Arlen, thank you so much. Uh, we so hope that every one of us will be able to contribute to heal Mother Earth. Thank you so much. Uh, thank, you thank you to the U.S. Thank you to Dr. Arlene Ancheta for joining us. And of course, thank you to the USD Graduate School for sponsoring the show tonight. Thank you, Dr. Fernando Pedrosa, President of the Graduate School Alumni Association. And thank you, USD AAI and Ms. Ida Tionko, Chairman of USD AAI Academics Committee and President of the USD Nursing Association, as well as Mrs. Nilda Pedrosa Hernet, Realtor and former Palo Leyte Counselor. Okay, gusto ko lang din batiin si Ellen, Ellen Manansalo, is the President of the Faculty of Pharmacy Alumni Association. Uh, hello, good evening, Ellen. And of course, to all the BOT of the USD AAI, all the volunteers of the USD AAI and, uh, and all the staff of the CBRC, thank you, thank you very much. Let us all continue learning more and discussing more about how to take care of the Mother Earth. Yeah, Claude? Uh, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Let us put more into actions, our love for Mother Earth. Earth. And here on Bridges, we do not build walls. We build connections of learning. We build connections of people. We build knowledge. Good night, everyone. Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Hi, good evening, Dr. Evelyn Songko at sa mga viewers ng ating Bridges. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Again. Another... And hello, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to our uh, viewers on Bridges here on CBRC.TV.